welcome back to Blush for the Christmas edition of Location. This time we are, in fact, not in Soho. We are in Donegal. We are, in fact, at the Hallian Club in Greencastle. If you haven't heard of it, you'll hear more soon. And tonight we have with us the usual reprobates. <laughs> Who will be the loud to escape from Edinburgh? We have the Mobile Gospel Choir from Up the Road. We have people from everywhere. We have Angela Vargas from Chicago. That's a boo, I think. <laughs> uh, but we would like to say goodbye to all that with pack up your bags, pack up your bags, crap your politics. Here's to a wonderful Christmas season. Let's hear it.
Christmas spirit. Right. So welcome to the gang. We have not seen each other since when. It's all sounding very Scottish play-ish. <laughs> we three <laughs> meet again. Fire of brimstone and something or other. And actually we're here in very mild Donegal, not in scary Edinburgh, which is very cold and miserable. With us this evening, we have got Angie Vargas. Hey. Hey. Come all the way from Chicago to join us. Angie's actually going to read from... Christmas Carol. Yes. Um, and meanwhile, we shall see what's going on out in the outer darkness. You know what's coming. That's what every American should do. Uh, Try to read Dickens in front of a group of... <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. The cellar door flew open with a booming sound, and then he heard the noise, much louder on the floors below, then coming up the stairs, then coming straight towards his door. It's humbug still, said Scrooge. I won't believe it. His color changed, though, when, without a pause, it came on through the heavy door and passed into the room before his eyes. Upon its coming in, the dying flame leaped up as though it cried, I know him, Marley's ghost, and fell again. Mercy, he said, dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? And you are fettered, tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life, replied the ghost. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it on of my own free will and of my own free will I wore it. Is its pattern strange to you? Scrooge trembled more and more. Or would you know, pursued the ghost, the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself. It was full as heavy and as long as this seven Christmas eves ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate a chance and hope of my procuring, Ebenezer. You were always a good friend to me, said Scrooge. Thank ye. You will be haunted, resumed the ghost, by three spirits. Fantastic! Wow, if that doesn't put you in the Christmas mood, I don't know what will. <laughs> oh, finding it. It's funny because I, I used to travel here uh, more frequently but haven't been for a very long time and I find myself having to get back into um, British or Irish phrases. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like today I, I was like, oh, do you have any construction paper? You know, and Sarah's like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking you know, It's little things like that. Do you know what construction paper is? Oh, construction paper. Exactly. Okay, so construction paper, I think, is like, it's, it's like cards, cards isn't it? Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. But it's, it's a colored it's card the, yeah. for making crafty things. Yep. Craft oh, okay. things. Exactly. But it's like that with everything. <laughs> you know? You know? It's, and then, it's then you funny. come here and it's even worse. <laughs> yes. What we're going to do, um, we would like to say big hellos to a bunch of people. Today we have got the Mobile Gospel Choir. Here comes Leo, yeah. just as represented. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some cottage Mary. Yeah. We have some cottage for you. Do you want to quickly get them? Yeah, brilliant. Excellent. We will see you guys later on. Woo! And who else have we got? Um, yes, I want to say a big shout out to Alice, our lovely Alice, who normally does our um, laptop. And Angie has very kindly agreed to take over from Alice for this episode. Alice is now the proud owner of a six month old. She said, with the hands off. <laughs> I think we're going to have the gospel choir. That's what we're going to do. Yay! 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 Oh, right, guys. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. What happened to the gospel choir? Mary, what happened? Did we, did we run out of the top hats? Oh, dear. What, the Dickens? I couldn't find Oh, God! Oh. <laughs> yeah, I definitely deserve one of those. <laughs> and what are, what are you going to sing for us? Calypso Excellent. Okay. See him lying on a bed of straw, a crafty stable with an open door. Mary's great. Carry me to hell. 
have go. You know this one, sing along at home. And we have uh, quite an interesting cross-dressing choir here today. Wasn't intended, but um, unfortunately, we didn't, we're in Donegal, we didn't have any more costumes, so we'll just live with that. And very soon, we'll have Ian or our wonderful guest for later in the evening. Yay! And for now, don't let our love go. Go on, Rudolph. <laughs> Um, it's very exciting. It is the wonderful, imaginative, extraordinarily talented chef who you may or may not know of, and if you don't, you soon will. And his name is Ian Orr, and he is the chef patron of Brown's Restaurant in Derry. And now there are four Brown's Restaurants, all of which are listed in the Michelin Guide, which is a pretty phenomenal and unique record for the Northwest. So, can we have a huge round of applause? This man could interview me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, pleasure. Hey, what a vibe in here to me, isn't it? <laughs> oh, very hot. Ah! <laughs> you fool. You know you stepped oh. into that one. Oh, very good, oh, very good. No. <laughs> Had to get this on, Wallet. No, it was a spare one. Yeah, I'm afraid so. It's how it works around here. Coach Kevin is going, we, we none yeah. of us get away with it. It's all over. Go and just take oh, off this little no, mic. No, no, just, just leave it on because you can take it off later if you really desperately need to cook for us. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> we're all very 
something good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, could yeah. something yeah. lovely. I, I, I love the idea of the coal, actually. It's a good present, isn't it? No, it is. It's not. That's a good, oh. good present. Ian's kids, oh. look away now. <laughs> <laughs> you better behave. <laughs> oh, dear. So, how on earth did this all begin? Were you, were you a fan of cooking from an early age? As, as a young age. Well, I wanted to be a fireman, actually, Sarah, <laughs> like my father, but I'm actually colorblind. And then I wanted to be a farmer, and then I realized I had no land to be a farmer. <laughs> and then I had passion to be a chef, so that's where it kind of come from. I, I love to eat food, you know. And that's where it kind of started. And then I uh, just love to eat food, try new things. And that's where I become a chef. And I absolutely love it. And for me, it's a passion, as you know, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Like when you, when you text me to do stuff, I'm constantly like, texting you at one o'clock in the morning. And I know, <laughs> okay. know you'll always be up at one o'clock in the morning. I'm always on the wrong time zone. No, and this is a man who literally will go, and I say, oh, I just had this in New York. I just had this in this little bar. I go, do you know about this? And he'll go, oh, what is that? And they look it up and then you find the recipe and you go, it. look, here's a photo, I've made it, here it is. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so it's just absolutely brilliant. Your joy and your love of it is really exciting. Have any of you guys been to Brown's? Yes, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, it is, uh, it's, it is, it is phenomenal. There's nothing right. like it in this part of the world. So, you know, let's hear it for promoting hey. what's hey. going on here. Yes. This is what we need, more of this kind of positive and imaginative. And, you know, what I love about um, you, Ian, is that Whatever you throw at you, you don't go, I don't know what that is. No, no. Which is often when people are resistant to change, it's something that happens in serious note. Um, but what is absolutely amazing is that all by yourself, you just go, yes, let's do that. And you definitely challenged me, Sarah. A lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in a good way, it's brilliant. Like you kind of, I think, bring out the best in oh, you know? And it. this dish, which I'm cooking later on, it's something I've never actually done before. And now it'll be on our menu because it's absolutely lovely. It's really, really good. And we're going to get to try that later on. Yeah. Oh, so how did, you, um, how did you start? Did you do the full catering college? Did you learn? What did you do? There's that place you can see uh, over just from the view here, Sarah, is a poor Josh catering college. used to be a catering college, but it's not anymore. And then I uh, went to basically a place in Derry, London, where I worked. Then I went up to Bangor and then with my lovely wife, Jennifer, we moved to London for three years. Did we went you? to a place called River Cafe, which is amazing. Back here, and then we opened Browns about 10 years so ago. So you were in the famous River Cafe. Loved it. Loved wow, it, loved that it. was quite a training. And that's where then. I kinda, when I sort of learned about, uh, you know, our food that we do is refined, but it's all about local seasonal projects. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what the River Cafe kind of taught me about it, you yeah. know. So, uh, But it's been amazing. And Sarah, what I love about my job is, like, we're constantly learning. Like, this dish, like, it's a classic, which I'm doing, and I have kind of put my stamp on it, and it's brilliant. And like, as I said, we just done it the other day. I let the kids taste it with Jennifer, and it's amazing. Really. Do, you, do you test stuff on oh, the kids at all? The, all the time. <laughs> they love it. And all, to be honest, they all loved it. Oliver was like, oh, he's not too sure about it, but then he came around. He came around, and he loved it. What's your favourite style of cooking? I mean, River Cafe is quite, um, is it Italian? It's Italian, but <clears throat> people think Italian food, yes, it's a lot of pizza and pasta, but there's just the way they... They, they sort of cook, you know, for example, they put broccoli in the pan, but instead of doing broccoli, they would add olive oil, garlic, Ooh, chili, lemon, yeah. you know, all that kind of... Oh, yeah, yeah, I've had that with, with almonds in it, yeah, almonds and broccoli. It. Yeah. How long has, has Brown's been, well, been we're going now? Ten years we're in business, but I've been cooking since... Ten years? So you've had, a, you've had an anniversary recently. Wow. And then I've been cooking since I'm 15, so what, well, I'm 36 now, everyone knows I'm 36, so <laughs> we can work that out at what age I am. But the food's always involving, you know, it's yeah. always getting, there's so much out there that people can kind of see on TV and internet and stuff, so. How would you define um, the food that you, you know, the food that you choose, cook your menu now at, at, at um, Brown's? Because you've got several, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, how, what would you describe it as? Um, is it modern? It's modern Irish, French, I would say. modern Irish. Mo modern, modern Irish with a kind of... You know, local seasonal, we kind of stick to, but I have a great team in all the restaurants, as you know, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we're the big thing about us is our attitude is we're we're always trying to make it better. So the day you think right, you've got brown sorted and that menu's great, I think it's the day it kind of goes downhill. So we're always trying to make it better. We're trying to find new projects, new techniques. And when we create a dish like a venison dish, which we love, we just try to make it better. That's yeah. that's our kind of fuss. Something that um. When I talk about food over here, that more and more people in London are saying is that I think because of all the sort of negative stuff that's happening with you know where do we source our food from, something that I don't know if you've come across this, but I'm noticing more and more people are going, oh, and that comes from Northern Ireland, oh, yeah, oh, and that yeah. comes from Ireland, oh, and you're suddenly going, all the good food is actually here, <laughs> it's right on our doorstep, and none of us are even really aware of it. So if nothing else, I think we should actually get quite excited about the prospect of what we can do here, because it's important. You know, it's, it's, you define yourself by it, don't you? Yeah, kind of. yeah. And you clearly do. And tell me now, you've got several different ones. Tell me, you had 
the initial restaurant, which is the one in Bonds Hill. Yeah, Browns Bonds Hill, we call it. And then we have Browns in Town, Sarah, which so is... So the, the, one, the one in Bonds Hill is quite, it's sort of higher end. It's higher more end. like where you're trying to, to do more Michelin-based style. A bit more style refined. Looking for, yeah, a bit more refined. And then Browns in Town, as you were just in there before, mm -hmm. it's more kind of casual. So you've got everything from it's like... brasserie sort of. Brasserie sort of style. Yeah. So everything from burgers, fish and chips, yeah. venison shoulder, that kind yeah. of... That kind of thing. We have then Browns on the Green Letter Kenny. Yeah. And then we have our Tower Country House in Macaras. It's a nine bedroom That's country right. house that we have. So I felt like you didn't have enough to do. I know. I know. So well, you look, you needed you... a bit more to do, yeah. As you know, we have a great, great team behind it as well, Sarah. Then we've got head chefs in the mall, we've got managers in yeah. the mall, just great staff yeah. which make Do you have to actually lose people sometimes just to kind of go, you've got to keep the standard tied? Or do you find that people are so excited they want to be a part of it and they want to just they're as ambitious as you are? That's a good point you made, sir. I think because we're actually cooking at that higher level you know touch wood my wood <laughs> like, you, know, like, you know we have kept our head chefs for a long time we yeah. have our managers because they, oh, well, they are working great. at a pace that we're not you know we're not going in there myself Marcus we're not going in say if it's quiet we're not saying oh we change the menu back to this do this it's like we just know that we're looking to push for high end sort of food yeah. and, and our staff that are there they're as passionate as we are. Like, yeah. we would never cook, or I would never go, right, boys, we can't use this beef no more now because it's a bit quieter. We can't use this butter. We have to use this cheap ingredient. And then if they see that, then staff leave. But if they yeah. see, we're always looking to make yeah. it better. Yeah. So I think that's, that's a good answer to that question there. We're always, we, we, we have a good staff that's always there with us, which is brilliant. Do you ever find yourself feeling like, oh, God, <gasps> or do you just always bounce out of bed going, yes, I'm not really, but it, it, it does get stressful, and it could just be, like it could be something that could just upset the service. We could be slow doing a table or a customer could be accidentally late and then you just have a bad night, you know. A, a, a waiting staff might accidentally drop a plate so they redress <laughs> the table and that's us having a stressful night. The, oh, God. The Fitbit is stressed out then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, you've say, got one of those things. Oh, God. I definitely in my job, sir, I think even my staff, we never get up in the morning going, oh, I don't want to go to work today because it's not our our job every day is completely different. Oh, just, Ian! You know, I thought you were going to say, yeah, I threw a turn up at somebody's no, head last night. It was it. just appalling. There's <laughs> not a lot. There's not a lot. It's all it's all good fun. I have to say. And um and so now you're going to cook something for us later on, aren't you? I'm going to cook a great dish as well. Me, myself, and you've been texting about fifty times over it, and, <laughs> and we got it right. And we got we got there in the end. I wasn't actually sure which one you were going to go for. Uh, I can say what it is now. Yeah, no, we're keeping. Yes, it you want, oh, do you want to know? Yeah. Yes. So we have an amazing crepe Suzette machine over here, Sarah. So crepe Suzette classically is uh, like pancakes with uh, brandy and orange sauce. Really, we're going to do a Christmas pudding. So we're going to do a Christmas pudding in there. Loads more brandy, loads of brandy butter, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I have to say, it is amazing, God. you know. So, oh, so, my God. So, um, before I forget to hand these out, before we finish, before we leave you this evening, um, oh, one of these for everybody, Brussels sprout, and you can see what the other actually party poppers. This, I thought, was a very good major chain store contribution so when we go pop at the end we will all do it oh. even you gary oh, you. even though i think <laughs> even though i don't think we can do without you there thank you go you. okay so um you're going to come and cook for us later yep. what about you guys tell us about oh. um tell us what you want for christmas is it good it's a taste hey, do you want to try one of these well done Ian. thank you very much fantastic hey. <laughs> So next time we see Ian, he's going to be the chef's wife and he's going to be doing flambéing, which will be very sexy. Right, <laughs> if you're stuck for a Christmas present, <laughs> you know yeah, what to do. Right. Get unbroken. Yay. This one is available and this has got a booklet full of the most beautiful, beautiful photographs by the very, very talented photographer Amanda Searle. And Andy Carver has done some of the live ones. So there you go. That's, that's very good. Um, and some of the songs you've heard today are all here. Um, yeah, so this is like a little... A little vinyl album and there is in fact a real vinyl album that has some of the current oh, dance mixes yeah. that did very well this year in the clubs oh, so like... if you're thinking what can i get that's a possibility yeah. <laughs> right and what we're going to do now is we are going to invite back the choir who are the games choir ever and we're going to get into a sort of a winter wonderlandy vibe Whoa. one two three
And now we're going to see what Ian's got for us back there. Yay! 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 <laughs> right, guys, we're going to make a... Hey, it's a great vibe in here, sir. I absolutely <laughs> love it. We're going to make a simple crepe suzette. So crepe, crepe suzette is a, basically a, an orange sauce, but we're going to make it really crispy by adding Christmas pudding, loads of brandy. So we'll get this on very, very easy. Kai's going to get a little bit of... a. A little bit of a Christmas spirit going on. So, guys, right this, is just a, this is just a caramel sauce. If you were looking to make a caramel sauce in the house, it's just a bit of sugar. And this is a proper crepe Suzette stand here that Sarah has. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just heat this up. I remember as a young chef before, you know, like back in the day, I love saying back in the day, it was like when you make a caramel, it goes like really hot, about 120, 130 degrees. But when I was a work experience, the, the pastry chef says, I, I never had a clue at this stage, you know how to cook. Yeah. The pastry chef says to me, uh, stick your finger in this. Now, I didn't oh. know what oh. boiled sugar looked like. Exactly. Ow. And I stuck it in. And what you automatically do, you stick, stick your finger in, into your mouth, and I burnt oh. my tongue. Goes, oh, the sadist. Oh. Oh. You know, like, oh. I just, hey, at the time, I didn't say to my parents, I didn't know anything about it, you know, really. But like, why don't that the young chef now? I'm getting serious trouble. So you know, like, right? <laughs> right, so, we're going to wait for this here to come. It's slowly coming, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some loads of, loads of brandy. I'm a big fan of brandy. And this is some homemade Christmas pudding that we have here, okay? So what we're going to do is we just kind of make this in sort of September time. We just have loads of plums in there, loads of brandy, loads of dates. We add some flour and then we steam it. And we get this lovely soft pudding. And guys, these, these are crepes that we've made. Simple crepes is uh, equal amounts of uh, flour, milk, two eggs, mix it together, a little bit of butter, and we have these lovely crepes that we have here. So we're just waiting for the sugar to come. You're not gonna stick your finger in this. No, side, I'm not, right? I'm not, but I'm fascinated. Had to have a little look. Oh my God, it smells but incredible. It's, it's, it's a simple, simple dessert done really, really well, I have to say. So it's slowly coming here, which is good. Are you a fan of crepes yet, sir? I love it. Actually, really I love nice. it. It's really... And the classic it's, one is, it's one of the best desserts. Yeah, it really, really is. We're nearly here. And what I love about it is it's so dramatic. You know, when you flambe it, That's you go, it. whoa, it's just beautiful. So you can see now the sugar, I'll turn it down a little bit. The sugar is starting to dissolve, okay? And normally, they, normally you would add orange. We're going to use clementines that are in season now. Mm. And normally then the classic one would be orange juice and orange segments. We're going to use clementine and we're going to add Christmas juice. So we're nearly there. Give this a little bit more. Right, so what we're going to do is nearly there, nearly there, nearly there, there. Wow. Don't you be sticking your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's irresponsible, Jeff. <laughs> but it's, that's how you make, so we're basically making crepe set. If you were doing like a caramel sauce at the house, you know, yeah. you would add sea salt to that and you would add cream. Oh my God. Like sea wow. salt, caramel so sauce. So is it sugar, butter and... That's it, sugar, but, but this, is the, this is the caramel here. And all we've done, salt. Sarah, was on a low heat. Melt wow. some sugar. Oh, it smells amazing. Right, so this I is am almost the... tempted to go. I know. He makes it look easy. I've tried to make caramel. It's not easy. No, so this is where the fun, fun bit starts. So we're going to just take this off the heat. We're going to add our brandy. Okay. Wow. This is where I'm going to do a bit of flame here. Nice bit of brandy in this. Oh, here we go. All right, <laughs> oh, stand back, everybody. Yay! Get the flame going. Whoa. Which is great. A little bit of drama, just to keep the Christmas spirit going. Did you see that? Our <laughs> Clementine. Oh God, it smells incredible. Oh, oh smell that brownie. Really, really good. Like so. Oh, it's beautiful. Now we're going to add some. Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I knew this would happen. There we go. There we go. <laughs> It's all about a fun. Mary, will you open the door over there? <laughs> and then... There we go. Didn't last for long, did it? No, no. And then what we're going to do now is we are going to basically add our brandy butter. Okay? Yeah. Like so. Mix this up. Oh, orange and brandy butter. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, really lovely. And now we're going to add our Christmas pudding. Oh, like my so. goodness. Oh. Turn up Hope you seat. guys are hungry. <laughs> oh. And like I would eat this on its own. Can you guys smell that yet? It smells yeah. so is it, is it good. Is it going through? Oh. Like so. Oh. Oh, it's now, like, it looks like kind of caramel with Christmas pudding. What actually happens now, all these pancakes just soak up all the beautiful 
Christmas pudding. So you got orange, well, Christmas pudding. Yeah. So you got all that kind of um, raisins and sweetness. And Plums you've in got there. Um, brandy. Brandy, Sarah. Bra brandy and butter. Ah. Brandy butter. Oh my god. Brandy butter. Mm. You don't have to add the brandy butter. I just like to add a little bit of butter in there. I think more brandy flavour we get in there, yeah. the better. Oh, I, I yeah. so agree. <laughs> <laughs> the more brandy flavour, the better. Do you agree? I'm just going to add a little bit more brandy, but we're not going to flow better. I kind of like the sort of the raw taste. When, of you brandy. mean what? Translation. We're not going to set the fire alarm <laughs> <not>. twice. <laughs> Oh, where's your spread of a veg? No, don't. I love, I love no, really, don't. I love what you said earlier on about the, the cardboard. We just call it cardboard here. You know the paper uh, you asked yes, for? Yes, the construction ah, paper. Brilliant. I love that. I love that. Right, so we're going to serve this up. Yeah. Oh. oh. Should we get out of your way so we don't yes. actually inadvertently cause damage to life in the limb? Oh, all that pancakes. Oh, you're in for a treat, so guys. When you see this. Oh. So oh. 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 Fantastic. <laughs> I can tell, Gary, you're, you're working away there. You just want some of this, don't you? The moment has come. Me first. <laughs> right, I'm oh not going to be greedy. Just, uh, 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 wow. This is... Uh, Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 Really works. Oh you goodness. wouldn't think it would, but oh, it does. Amazing. Wow, that's incredible. Wow. That's going to go on your menu. Oh, it's a, mm, like, yeah, like, oh, definitely going over there. Some ice cream, mm. Sarah, some toasted mm. almonds over it. It'd be beautiful. It's got a full yeah. Christmas flavour. You, know, like, <laughs> you know, if you're not into having full Christmas pudding, and you just want something that has all the, the, the um, ingredients. It's actually quite a light dessert, but I say there's plenty of calories in there. Isn't there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's just a few. Don't say that. No, no. <laughs> it's Christmas. Oh, fantastic. You get the back there, big man, we'll take it to you one. Oh, oh well, this, this man needs it more than anyone. Here you go. Look at it over here. It's coming. And it's never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, give it back, give it back. Really right, good. come and join us. We're going to do the last song and then has everybody got a something to hit or pop or whatever? Because we're going to be out in a moment. Right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you for being game enough to put up with the fact that, strangely, the Dickens costumes weren't the walkies. Um, yeah. But I thought I thought they looked really good, actually. Anyway, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, Can we get one little Ooh. snapshot of these guys together? Yeah. Thank you. Right? No, honestly, that was, that was very good of you. Here we go. So please let's make this the most fantastic Christmas ever. Let's value our families, let's value our neighbours and our friends and all those good things that we actually do have and all the things that we share and most of all, food! That's it. Yay! 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 Do that. and, um, have a fantastic Christmas. Don't forget to buy my album. Uh, and in between, we're going to do the Christmas single, Christmas Every Day. And I think some of you guys already know it. I think the man with the prettiest bonnet of all knows it. <laughs> okay, let's go, guys. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, and we'll see you next time at Back to Blacks, back in London. Thank you very much. Give yourselves a round of applause. Okay, let's go. I'd lie awake and 